All right, so this is our product that we've made, and I hope this is the correct product. So one of the things we do as chemists is that once you've made your product in the laboratory, you need to carry out a series of characterization to confirm that what you've made is actually what you think it is. So one of the ways of characterizing complexes or organic ligands is to run a Fourier transform infrared spectra for it. So what we've got here, this uh, Epeki female model of infrared, which is connected to this laptop, and then the laptop is connected to a computer because we want to print out our results. Okay, so the infrared machine, we usually come with different specification depending on the company that is manufacturing it. So you'll be able to know how to use them, but the technique is basically the same. Before you run your measurement, you open up the application, the software that you've got in your, on your laptop. And once that is up and running, the first thing you want to do is to measure the background of the machine. Because what it does is that it has to measure your sample and then any absorption of any other material within that environment. So you need to tell the machine that now you have to understand your environment. And by so doing, we measure what we call the background. So without our sample, you run an empty scan that kind of tells the machine, whatever you are picking now is not my sample, it's just your background. So after that, you cannot run the measurement of your real sample. So what the machine does is that it picks up a new absorption when you are running your measurement, and then that absorption is also going to include the background that the machine had measured previously. So what it does is it subtracts that background which you've measured and then give you back what the actual absorption of your sample truly is. So already I've run the background. So all I'm going to do now is to place my sample. So in here you've got a small square metallic chamber. Most of them are usually zinc sulfide. So I'm just going to place my sample to cover that and then bring back this and screw that down to clamp onto my sample. It's just going to be a bit tight but not too tight. Once I've done that, I can come back to my laptop and then click scan. So when I click the scan, it tries to give me a force gauge, which I expect to be around, 20, around 100. So that has already been measured. So again, it depends on machine. I have used a machine that doesn't have this force gauge. So this force gauge basically tells you how tight you should clamp this. So usually we just ask students to make it up to 100 and that is fine. So that means that you have this compartment tightly fixed and then you can now measure, you can see the spectra that you've got there. So you can see the IR spectra running from around 3,500 wave number all the way to 400. And so we can analyze each and every one of this peak. And now I can ask it to scan. Uh, 
Okay, so our scan is done. Now, if you look at this, you see that you may have some difficulties trying to know the position of these peaks. So, but technology has made it easy. All I have to say is label these peaks. And at every point where I have the peak, it tells me what wave number I've got in there. And so at this point, I can just print this particular spectra that I've got. And that is it. We've got our spectra for the sample that we've made. And if we compare this with starting material, we can actually see that our reaction dictates place. Okay, because of course, if you look at the stretching frequencies you've got there, you've got that coming from the water that is attached. If you look at the complex that we formed, so these stretching vibrations around 3,500 are coming from the OH stretching of water. And then you've got your CO stretching and then the ring stretching around 1,300, 1,500, 1,470. So you've got the OH, the CO around uh, 16, 16 and 1577. So that's typically means that the product we have is actually what we think it is. But just remember that IR alone cannot be the only way you verify if the compound you've made is actually what it is. Because this can be correct, but your sample will have impurities. So you also have to characterize, look at elemental analysis to make sure that your sample is pure and it's what you want it to be.